Welcome to a new Neville Update. I'm your host, Ashley Neville. This week, it's all about the conference finals. Billion Dollar Bets, the Boston Bullies, Houston, You Have a Problem, and Death Lineup. Breaking news! This just in. The Supreme Court has caught up with the times and realized it's 2018. Reality check, we've all been mentally preparing ourselves for this to be socially acceptable. Casual sports fans and diehards already religiously bet on fantasy sports, <clears throat> especially on Sundays. NCAA bracket pools are a yearly obsession and both DraftKings and FanDuel blew up overnight. Be in denial if you want, but we all knew this was going to happen. We've seen this before. It's exactly like alcohol, tobacco, firearms, and cannabis. Time for the government and specific states to be organized and on the same page and make billions of dollars off suckers trying to guess baseball scores. Regulate it to protect the integrity from rigged games and allow people to make their own choices. People have already been able to gamble on games. Vegas and Atlantic City have been the cause of a lot of unpaid bills, but hey, just because you can bet your life savings on a game doesn't mean you should. How much you want to bet everyone in pretend denial about betting being morally wrong for sports will be the first people to download whatever new app they create to bet in the arenas. They'll be using it more than Facebook and Instagram. States like New Jersey who are in serious financial crisis need an economy boost and the sports leagues want a little cut, so it was only a matter of time. Okay, okay, LeBron didn't play well in game one. Brad Stevens sent weak side help every time he caught the ball. Missed a lot of little bunnies he normally makes. Obviously, he's not worried. Have you seen him in the playoffs over the last decade? By the way, of course the greatest player on the planet can recall and break down a play almost flawlessly. He knows what he's doing. That moment took all the attention away from the loss and put the focus on a bounce back game. I'm shocked everyone is so surprised. He's LeBron. Expect an aggressive king after he's had the chance to watch the footage. Playoffs are about adjustments, so Ty Lu and LeBron will make a few. Please start Tristan. Come on, Ty Lu, don't get out coached all series. Put Tristan Thompson in the starting lineup so you have an athletic and active big body to compete with Horford so Kevin Love can play the four and not be so exhausted. The Cavs seemed sluggish and uninspired after getting knocked in the mouth early in TD Garden. Not much moving without the ball, flat shots, and seemed a step slower in game one. Kevin Love went ice cold, froze like a popsicle. Come on, he sucked, admit it. Hey, what happened to the All-Star who showed up last series? J.R. Smith seemed discouraged. He gets props as a defender, but Jason Tatum started embarrassing him and made the crowd go wild. They need to be involved early to find their grooves or else they'll be putting up bricks and start pouting. Playing from behind and becoming disinterested? Oh, and by the way, I'm sick and tired of Rodney Hood. Brad Stevens is too humble for his own good, but that mindset has rubbed off on his squad, especially on defense. It's funny how quickly people forget that Al Horford helped the Florida Gators win back-to-back -back national championships. Leadership and playmaking in major moments from a guy with a handful of all-star appearances? His calm demeanor balances out the energy of his young teammates. He sets the tone of every game by being the Celtics' foundation on defense and has always been very underrated. Great footwork and has a mid-range shot that has transitioned nicely. Also being a solid three-point threat when he's not beasting down low. Jalen Brown is playing like an all-star caliber two-way player and Tatum is clutch. Those handles and that touch, very impressive. Lately, it looks like he's more important than Kyrie moving forward. Kyrie is injury prone. Katie somehow quietly dominated game one in Houston. Anybody else notice how he made scoring 37 points look really easy? He was so locked in. It was catch and shoot all night. I saw some great spin move fadeaways, picking his spots and elevating like he was at morning shoot around with no one in the gym. Very decisive. Not a bunch of unnecessary dribbling like another team I know, <clears throat> the Rockets. But come on, you think PJ Tucker or Nene can guard Kevin Durant? Okay. Steph didn't even score 20 points. He's so falling off. Um, He had 18 points, eight assists, and six rebounds and a bunch of little things not shown on the stat sheet, but everyone wants to act like he had some horrible game because he missed a few easy ones while KD was in rhythm. Jeez, give the guy a break. His team won the game, right? The game was tied at half, and in the third, that death lineup created separation. 
Clay got it going and finished with 28, draining a few daggers to stop the Rockets' runs. Oh, and can we please acknowledge that Draymond Green knows exactly what he's doing? All the trash talk and throwing elbows adds to the intensity. He can basically defend one through five while doing all the extra scrappy things, helping on the weak side. Plus, he's not afraid to get thrown out of the game for his teammates. Please never change, Draymond. Nine rebounds and nine assists? Houston supporting cast, I've had faith in you all year, but come on, the franchise players need more help. Hello? Any Rockets role players feel like making an impact? It's kinda now or never. Think about it this way. KD and Harden both going 35 plus, Steph and CP3 both get 20 plus, so the superstars cancel each other out. Capella and Draymond battling for boards, Ariza or Gerald Green need to find their confidence from deep or this will be a sweep. Is Joe Johnson going to do anything or not? Sixth man of the year, Eric Gordon, can't be a no-show in the first half. He has to keep up with Clay for them to have a chance. Warriors took control on the road in the third quarter and never looked back. And Steph had a bad game. That's all I've got for this week's Neville Update. Be on the lookout for our NBA Conference Finals coverage on a new basketball recap next week. Shout out to my co-producer Winston Marshall for all of his help and a special thanks to the MyVids team for letting me use this space to create magic. Thanks for watching.